In this newscast, we have reports on Exercise Scotian Traverse, a documentary of a sniper in Afghanistan, but we begin our show with a report on a brand new vehicle that will play a role in Army transformation. Soldiers get excited at the thought of receiving new kit. Our combat engineers will now have a highly mobile, high-speed loader backhoe. No doubt, it will be a welcome addition to the Army. The combat engineers will receive 28 multi-purpose engineer vehicles, also known as the MPEV, beginning this fall. The MPEV is a 13-ton vehicle and CC-130 deployable, offers excellent mine blast protection during possible mine strikes, and is capable of traveling up to 100 kilometers per hour. It is fast, very agile, and because of its air brake system with ABS control, it has the capability to practically stop on a dime, even at high speeds. Major Rick Topa, of Heavy Equipment and Fighting Vehicles at Director of Land Requirements, says that the young sappers in the regiment will be able to use this as a Swiss Army knife on wheels. So it's going to give the commanders flexibility. They'll be able to um, plan the tactics a little bit better. Uh, the soldiers will be a lot more happy uh, or happier. They'll be able to, uh, you know, have a proper trench that's dug, uh, you know, to the specs. Uh, soldier fatigue is less. Um, and it also gives us uh, a, a real multi-purpose sense because the vehicle is also CC-130 Herkable. Uh, so we can get this thing anywhere in the world, uh, roll on, roll off, uh, you know, at, at the availability of an aircraft. They'll be able to use this on every task, every mission that they go on. Uh, the thing that it does too for the soldiers is it replaces the shovel. Uh, this will actually, you know, in the year 2004, uh, we're actually digging trenches mechanically and not by hand anymore. Corporal Michael Sove believes the soldiers across the country are very excited about the Army's acquisition of the MPEV. I mean, you got the, you got the loader in the front, you got the backhoe in the back, you got the auger that goes with it, you got the, the power hookup for all the power tools, the hydraulic tools. I mean, it's a, it's a blessing in disguise. It is, it is a Swiss Army knife for the engineers. With the ever-existing threat of mines on foreign operations, the protection included in this engineer vehicle could potentially save lives in the future. They did a mine explosion, they did a mine test on it. They put eight kilograms underneath the back tire and they said it could almost be fixed on second, on, on first line. So, I mean, and the, the only thing they said the driver would have had was a uh, busted eardrums if he didn't have his earplugs in. What it means is we're bringing ourselves into, you know, the, the, the 21st century. Uh, we've got a piece of equipment now that, that, that is high speed, high mobility. Uh, cutting-edge technology, every creature comfort that the soldier could, could want is in here. The delivery of the multi-purpose engineer vehicles to organizations across the Army begins this September. As today's Army continues to transform, the acquisition of this new multi-purpose engineer vehicle is definitely a step in the right direction. This high-speed backhoe loader is capable of intimate close support digging and will be a welcome addition to the combat engineers and ultimately to the Army. Sergeant Craig Reed, Army News, Ottawa. More than 700 soldiers from 36 Brigade participated in exercise Scotian Traverse, which took place in various locations throughout the Maritimes. With the heightened awareness of terrorist threats around the world, this exercise concentrated on vital point protection. Sergeant Todd Berry has the story. Exercise Scotia Traverse took off with more than 700 reservists from 36th Brigade dispersed across Nova Scotia to provide vital point security. Canada's reserve force will be critical. The reserve system is not realizing its full potential. And thus any part of any coherent plan for protecting our interests will include ensuring our reserves are key players in protecting Canadians in their own communities. In Cape Breton, 1st Battalion Nova Scotia Highlanders has been tasked to prevent suspected terrorists from escaping via the remote Marguerite airfield. Because of terrorist threat, they're trying to escape apparently, Cape Breton, and their means of escape right now is the Marguerite airfield right here, and our job is to uh, prevent them from escaping, so we're going to try our best anyway. Exercises in the reserves in their own communities strengthens a bond with the people they may be required to protect. They're very interested in what we're doing. They have a lot of interesting questions. We answer them. Uh, we explain to them what we're doing and uh, 
especially when we're using concertina wire and all that, make sure that they got their animals, they take their animals for a walk to keep them on the doggies, so they won't get cut up the razor, right? But no, the civilian population is normally great with us. For Army News, this is Sergeant Todd Berry in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. For more information on your, your Army and other stories Army News has covered, visit our website at army.gc.ca. On most deployed missions, work is done behind the scenes that most soldiers don't get a chance to see. In this next piece, courtesy of Combat Camera, a sniper, unidentified for security reasons, demonstrates how he performs his job in Afghanistan. The longest I've deployed uh, while on uh, Op Athena has been uh, four days, five nights, and that was with a six-man team. You have your normal battle preparation, that's just where you get ready, you load up, you throw on all your camouflage stuff. Like uh, for winter time, we'd be wearing whites. If we're going to the woods, we'd be wearing green. So you have to put all that on. Our largest weapon is a, what's called a TAC-50. It's a 50 caliber or 12.7 millimeter rifle. It's bolt action. It's, uh, it comes with a suppressor and it's accurate out to 1,850 meters. Then once you've done all your battle prep, you have to go from point A to point B, and point B being uh, where you're actually going to set up to do your job, whatever it be, surveillance or overwatch. So for that particular scenario, because we're in a building, there's no reason to crawl along the ground. You're just going to make lots of noise. The best thing to do is just walk really, really quiet. And the best way to do that is to be on both your feet and just take your time going through the building. We're not so much door kicking, making lots of noise, being aggressive. We like to sneak around. Some of the things we do to uh, provide security to our rear is uh, put up trip flares or trip chem lights. Trip flares tend to uh, attract too much attention, so sometimes we'll put out a trip chem light. We have various chem lights for this. We can have them in infrared, so nobody actually sees a chem light going off unless you have a... Uh, night vision equipment on. Once we got towards the uh, end of the position, uh, because it was so open, we had to crawl just to keep a nice low silhouette. From there, we'd set up our position, whether it be uh, putting up uh, extra camouflage in our position. Uh, a lot of the times, we first we have to get ranges to our targets, if we have targets, and just do a quick surveillance of the area. We'll, uh, we'll sit anywhere from 12 hours to 96 at the very, very most, but on average, it's usually about 24-hour missions that a two to three man team will be sent on. You have to be patient. You also have to uh, be able to think on your own. You have to be independent. A sniper, uh, well, we provide a service and that service is provide precision long range fire or even precision short range fire to the commander. Basically, we train our snipers to uh, go for headshots out to 300, movers out to five, a first round kill up to 600 meters, and then harassing fire anywhere from eight to 1,000 meters. Uh, from there, uh, once the OP is done, we try to crawl out facing the, uh, the threat area. And then we'll just try to break away and just get away nice and quiet. Nobody was ever there and just sneak back into uh, where our extraction point is. And hopefully nobody will ever know that we were ever there. This is Army News, your news for your Army. And we would like to hear from you. 
we welcome your feedback. Please visit our website at army.gc.ca. With that, you're up to date. Coming up next, a documentary of the people who guard our north. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. For Army News, I'm Sergeant Craig Reed.